Awesome. Thanks, Sarah. Yeah. So in what may be one of the more meta projects that is presented tonight, uh, we were a product person and an engineer working on a problem that is experienced by engineers. And we used the pro the process of making the project to feed the updates that we're going to be using to like generate the agendas that we'll see in a sec. Uh, so, uh, helping engineering managers stay in the loop with their team. Uh, so just to kind of give a little bit of background on the problem, right? So ineffective one-on-ones between developers and managers, right? I think everyone's familiar with the concept of a one-on-one. -on -one. It's really, you know, honestly, one of the ways in which uh, the relationship between a manager and a manage and someone that is being managed uh, is, is really sort of anchored and grounded. And, and so uh, these are really kind of a formative inner point of interaction between managers and managers or managers and team members. Um, but they're often, you know, not as effective as they could be, right? And this leads to strained relationships between a manager and their team members, which in turn results in reduced effectiveness of the team and the team members, lower job satisfaction for the team members, higher employee turnover, which ultimately makes for wasted time, wasted money, and a lot of frustrated and dejected engineers and managers. And so why does this happen? Well, it, there's really two parts to this problem, right? There's the there's the engineers and then there's the engineering managers. And so on the engineering on the on the side of the team members, communicating status, progress and blockers in the format that managers need doesn't isn't really something that comes naturally. Like it doesn't come naturally I think to just about anyone who's not been a manager or isn't a manager, but it particularly doesn't come naturally uh to, you know as we're sort of trying to blend the technical world with the business world. Uh, and in addition to that, engineers are often aren't often the type of folks to like proactively seek out their manager to communicate updates and and status, which leads to a lot of like missed information. And then on the engineering manager side, managers don't often allocate time for these one on ones, which leads to the kind of unstructured, unproductive meetings that we talked about. Uh, but then even if they do try to pre prepare for these meetings, you know, their context on what they should be talking about or asking their team members about is really limited to what their team member uh, brings to the meeting and what they've gleaned from the larger working environment uh, that they share with their team. And so how do we know all of this? Well, because as I mentioned already, we've kind of lived this. So, uh, Josh has been my partner in crime. Josh, you want to just wave hello. Uh, Josh has been a six year six has spent six years as a, as a developer, and unfortunately has had a lot of time where one on ones get canceled. They're kind of poorly run. They're not very structured. Uh, oftentimes, because even when they're having them, then it's like, okay, well, I've got to tell you what has been going on with me so that we can then actually have an informed conversation about whatever it is that is most important to be talking about, right? And me on my side, I've spent the last four years or so managing remote team members where I don't really have the context or as much context as I might like to from maybe being working more directly in person with them. Uh, and so I actually really like having those meetings, but like oftentimes having those meetings, you know, the first half of it is really just a discovery exercise where I'm like, okay, well, like, you know, as Josh was calling out in her part of this, it's like, what, let's, let's kind of unpack all the things that we should actually be talking about, and then we can talk about them. Uh, and so the solution, uh, as we have put together here, uh, is collecting comprehensive updates, which we've defined as accomplishments, blockers, risks, and personal updates. Uh, from team members at a time of their choosing and in a manner that feels engaging, right? You know, we're also going to be using some cutting edge tech for this, which is going to earn a little bit of bonus points uh, for the team members. We're going to provide all these updates uh, to managers in a, as a structured agenda at the click of a button, and we're going to generate thoughtful follow-up questions that they would have time to come up with if they uh, had time to prepare. So to go ahead and go right into the demo, uh, what I'm going to actually do now is I'm going to go ahead and share my other screen. And so what you all are now seeing is a Chainlit app uh, that we've implemented to collect updates uh, from the team members. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit and just run through a simple chat. And so as it's responding, uh, I'm as as I'm giving it updates, it's it is keeping track of what what content I've already provided. Uh, and then I from there, it's figuring out which questions it needs to ask as a follow-up. 
And so from here, we've gone, we've already done accomplishments. We'll now do blockers. And so, you know, from here, we're manifesting uh, an awesome demo. Uh, and then finally, I'm just going to go ahead and add something like really silly and distinctive as an update, just so that it's easy to kind of reference that in the, the agenda. And so then lastly, it's asking me for my email. Now it's thinking. And voila. So great, we've completed your update. Here's a summary of what we've discussed. We'll go ahead and save this update for your manager. So that's the chatbot interface. And so over here, this is a Next.js UI uh, that's hooked up to a fast API backend, which also has all the RAG pipeline. Uh, and so just for kind of good measure, what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm actually going to generate an agenda for Josh from like a previous week. We'll say the 15th through the 19th. I'm going to say, OK, I want all of these different types of updates. And this is going to take a sec. And here we go. So now we've got personal updates. We've got the accomplishments, blockers, risks to company goals. And then here are lovely uh, follow-up questions that the LLM has actually provided for us based on all of this context up here. And now what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'll just refresh. I'm actually going to say for my update, I'm going to use this week as the parameters. We'll go ahead and just include all these again. And this will take a second. And here we go. All right, so I'm planning to have grilled cheese sandwich party. Uh, it missed my accomplishments, but uh, it got a lot of this other stuff. Uh, and there's also these follow-up questions here. Um, and so soup to nuts, this is kind of the full flow. Uh, and so just to kind of talk through more of the implementation details, we'll actually go back over to our presentation. And so as I've kind of, you know, folks that are in the know on this will have already recognized all the, how all the different puzzle pieces come together, but we've got a Chainlet, uh, Chatbot UI, a Lane Graph agent, OpenAI right now is leveraged as the LLM, and then Qdrint is our vector store. Uh, as I've already mentioned, our state includes these five attributes, which I'll call out specifically because those are pretty important for the next slide. And then from here, there's kind of a lot going on, but this is basically like a lo-fi sequence diagram that kind of details what the full flow is, right? So we're setting the initial update state and taking in the user message. The, the agent is then prompting the LLM to interpret the user's response and what categories of information it includes and passing that back to the agent to say, okay, to update our state to say, okay, well, which of our update components do we now have? From there, where the, the agent is then saying, okay, well, do I need more update components or it, do I have all the information I need and I'm good to go get a summary, right? And so that's the full flow. And then, so depending on whether or not we have all that information, we're breaking out of our agent loop uh, and then prompting the LLM to generate a summary, then pushing that summary to Qdrent. And then on the other side of the experience, we've got all the components that we just named, the Versal, front end, fast API, back end, lang chain, rag pipeline. We're using the same uh, chat and embedding models uh, and the same vector store. And then same kind of lo-fi sequence diagram approach here. We're setting all the parameters for the agenda to be generated from Versal, passing that to fast API. That those parameters are then being incorporated as uh, incorporated as part of basically as, uh, to support like metadata filtering as part of the RAG pipeline. Uh, so, that, and then we're then using that full query to go out to the Qdrint vector store, get our content back, uh, as well as generate the LLM, generate the follow-up questions via the LLM, uh, and then pass all that data back to Fast API to then uh, generate the PDF. Opportunities for improvement. There's a lot we want to do with this. We didn't get through uh, nearly as much as I think we kind of wanted to when we set out the uh, set out to implement the project. But you know, just to kind of quickly run through these, uh, we didn't. We have 
uh, all this is hooked up and instrumented in Langsmith now, but there's a lot of room for improvement in terms of actually evaluating the PDF data, the, the agenda that's created, uh, and also to optimize our LLM calls. We'd love to do things like tightly integrating some like the chat bot to authenticate users and create them in fast API we'll also get existing projects uh, that they once we know who those users are, uh, we'd love to improve the chat experience so like structured options for the user, whether it's the beginning of the week or the end of the week, adding like a multimodal interface so that you can just talk about your project, uh, open source LLMs uh, to both for cost as well as privacy. Like I think that the the agent flow that we've implemented actually opens us up to use very, very cost effective open source LLMs because we're not actually asking the LLM to do a whole lot of thinking. We're really just saying, hey, response by response, match the input that you've been given against a certain set of categories uh, and then generate a, a reply. Um, but then also like the big sort of elephant in the room with using an app like this is, you know, given that we're going to be only leveraging, uh, you know, this is like very proprietary information and open source LLM is definitely going to be preferred over like a public uh, proprietary LLM, few shot logic, adding more metadata elements to support more fil more targeted filtering and then integrating other types of data such as like Trello, Google Calendar, just to provide context on the agenda that's generated. So. Lots to work on, but pretty proud of what we've got so far, and that's what we've got.